Since white settlement commenced in Victoria in 1835, the Yarra River has been many things to many people. A water supply source, a stormwater drain and sewer, a transport route and a recreational venue. Despite being for years the butt of endless jokes, too thick to drink, too thin to plough, the Yarra is as crucial to Melbourne as it was in the 1830s. It links the city to the country and, increasingly, the city to the bay. A less than imposing stream by world standards, the 242 kilometre long Yarra River has nevertheless always been a major element in shaping the fabric of Melbourne and a large part of its cultural character. This humble, sepia-coloured stream is more than a watercourse. It is the vital narrative thread that runs right through the story of Melbourne. Over the past 100 years, many elements of that marvellous story have been recorded on film. Melbourne's water is held to be one of the purest supplied to any capital city, and it is largely the Yarra that provides this fabulous freshwater amenity. The Yarra's pristine catchment is one of only four enclosed catchments on Earth, the result of an inspired decision made in the 1890s to lock up the headwaters of the river. Through towering forests of mountain ash and tree ferns, the catchment embraces the Yarra and a host of tributary streams, all the way up the crests of the highest ridges on the Borbor Plateau, where the river commences as a trickle. The total catchment is more than 4,000 square kilometres, and it provides most of the water to a city of over 3 million people. Piping water to Melbourne commenced as long ago as 1857, with the completion of the Yanyin Reservoir adjacent to the Plenty River. In 1891, the newly formed Melbourne and Metropolitan Board of Works became responsible for Melbourne's water supply system, progressively augmenting it with upstream Yarra tributaries. Early works included a diversion weir on the O'Shaughnessy River which was completed in 1914 and would in turn be replaced by the O'Shaughnessy Reservoir. This was part of the site selected and cleared for the construction of the O'Shaughnessy Reservoir. The Maroondah scheme was developed over a number of years. Work on a new dam to replace an upstream diversion weir continued through the 1920s. As all the sand and cement for the Maroondah Dam's construction had to be brought from Melbourne to the terminal of the Broad Gauge Railway at Hillsville and then to the site of the dam, it was decided to erect an ambitious bi-cable aerial ropeway to haul the construction material. This was an enormous benefit to a major construction project in mountainous country, saving time, road wear and tear and the need to use horses and drays. The ropeway was suspended from tall wooden towers spaced at intervals along the route for a distance of over four kilometres. Construction work for the lower section of the dam commenced in October 1920, with large rocks sourced from the site, rock forming part of the base material. The upper portions of the dam and outlet tower commenced two years later and was completed in 1927. Due to droughts in 1926 and 1927, the dam took longer to fill than anticipated, but eventually it was full to capacity and has been in use ever since. 
The massive curved concrete wall and elegant European-style gardens have drawn generations of sightseers. Maroondah is a very scenic place with panoramic outlook over the vast expanse of water that is cradled by forests and mountains. Water from Maroondah serviced the metropolitan area's northern and western suburbs and on completion nearly doubled Melbourne's storage capacity. The O'Shaughnessy Reservoir, completed in 1928, serviced the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, while Sylvan Reservoir, completed four years later, 